What's up y'all? I'm Tom and this is Like a Math Class. In this video we're going to continue our discussion of the discriminant and how we can use it in an IB style question that you might see on an SL exam. Let's get to it. We're going to use the discriminant to find boundaries of solutions. Now there's a couple things that you need to keep in mind when we're doing this. First off, what is our discriminant? Our discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. That's the part underneath the square root in your quadratic formula. The second thing you need to know is that typically you are not going to see this question structured with all three parts on an IB exam. You'd be asked to find no solutions, one solution, or two solutions. But the way that I approach this with my students is I say start by finding where the k values equal zero, where the discriminant equals zero. And then you can do your adjustments with uh, less than or greater than to find no solutions or two solutions. And I suggest that because you don't really want to mess with inequalities when you're working through this. Just find where these things equal zero and then do a little bit of analysis after the fact. If you remember, to find one solution, our discriminant had to equal zero. To find no solutions, it's where our discriminant was less than zero. And to find two solutions is where our discriminant was greater than zero. So we're going to start here. And we're going to start by looking at what is our A value, what is our B value, and what is our C value. A is negative K, B is K minus 4, and C is negative 1 half. So let's put those values into our middle uh, question here, our, our finding our one solution. So 0 equals B squared, K minus 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is negative k, times c, which is negative 1 half. So we want to find out where these things equal 0. So we'll start by, let's look at this piece first, right? We've got negative 4 times negative 1 half. That's, okay, so that's going to be positive 2 times a negative k. So we're going to have minus 2k over here. And then in here, we're going to have k squared minus 8k plus 16, and all of that is going to equal 0. So we've got uh, 8k, negative 8k, and a negative 2k. So 0 equals k squared minus 10k plus 16. Now if we were to factor this, because now we've got kind of a quadratic within a quadratic, right? These This discriminant value, the finding of the values of k, is a quadratic in and of itself. So we're going to find two spots where this thing equals 0. Um, but if we do a quick mental factoring, uh, what are the values of, that multiply together to give us 16, that add together to give us negative 10? We know that is going to be k minus 8 and k minus 2. So that means k is going to either equal 8 or k is going to equal 2. So at those two values, we are going to have one solution for this quadratic right here. So if we wanted to find this one, that is your solution right here. These two values are going to make this thing have only one solution. We want to do a little bit of analysis on this to determine where is this thing going to be greater than zero, where is the discriminant going to be greater than zero, and where is the discriminant going to be less than zero. So we know that we've got boundary values of k equaling 2 and 8. And all I've done here, and I've just, I'm just kind of creating a number line. And if I want to consider, these are my values of k, right? k is equal to 8 and k is equal to 2. So if I want to find out, well, what happens in between here? I want to just pick any number in between here. Maybe I take a value of 5, right? So that's a number in between 2 and 8. Any, I could pick any number in between there. But if I were to put that into this function, or even this function here, because these are where these two things equal zero. If I put five in for k, I'm gonna have five minus eight, and I'm gonna have five minus two. So I'm gonna have negative three times a positive three. And so that's gonna give me a negative number. So that means in between these two values, I'm gonna end up with a negative discriminant my k values are going to produce a negative value. So where is this thing have no solutions? It has no solutions when k is between 2 and 8. This is your solution for when k 
is negative or when you have no solutions. Similarly, if we were to look outside of these values, maybe I take a value of zero to be K. So if I put zero in here, zero minus eight and zero minus two, I end up with negative eight times negative two. That's gonna give me a positive value, which means uh, that's gonna be one of the things that's gonna give me positive solutions, anything less than two. And similarly, if I take a value bigger than eight, again, I'm just picking numbers that I can easily work with. I've got 10 minus eight times 10 minus two. I'm gonna have two times a positive eight. That's gonna give me a positive solution. So again, I'm gonna have positive solutions this way. So when K is greater than eight, greater than eight, or K is less than two, those are going to be the two, the two sets of values that are going to create positive solutions. So I could pick any number within those inequalities to get either a negative result or a positive result. So that's how we end up creating these, these whole spectrums of values, this whole range or domain of values for K that will make a positive or a negative result. Um, so that's why I also suggest just starting with this and then doing just a little bit of analysis. Because remember, all of these things, these are saying this is the value of K that when I drop it into here, I'm gonna get this thing touching the X axis. So if I can find the two values where it's touching, then anything out in these ranges or in between these is where I'm gonna have no solutions where it's sinking or floating above or below the X axis or where it's crossing the X axis at two points. So I hope that was helpful in trying to solve this type of question. If it was, make sure you give me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.